Welcome to Endoscopy on Air 2020. Watch Roberta Maselli from Milano in treating a patient with gastric antral vascular ictation. Important. So, Roberta, can we Hello, come to you? Oh. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Welcome again. Yeah, we so have happy a to see you. Ah, ciao. women group. Okay, ciao, yeah. ciao, ciao, because you are the best. We know that. And we need you. Okay, Robbie, yes. can you summarize the case for us and then tell us uh, what you yeah. are doing, what are you so, using? I have a case of a 72 male, this gentleman, that came to our attention for a uh, GAVE, so a gastric central vascular ectasia. Um, and they have this chronic uh, anemia because of the gave. So the hemoglobin dropped till 4.5. 4 so imagine how was the condition of the patient. And in several other other they tried already to treat this gave with the APC. So we, let's say with the gold standard, with the standard therapy we use currently for gave. Uh, but it's not responsive because uh, it needs blood transfusion every two weeks. So it came to our attention and uh, we thought to try to treat the GAVE with uh, RFA, so with the radiofrequency ablation. But before talking uh, about Roberta, the RFA, Roberta, yeah. just let me leave this case to a, to a huge super expert, Rian Hedry. Please, Rian, go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Roberta. It's uh, Rehan Hedry here. Uh, good to see oh, you guys. Hello. So listen, we so just had... We heard the, uh, the, the case history. So these, uh, these patients are very challenging because uh, they have a comorbidity from their uh, other chronic conditions like renal failure or liver or connective tissue disease. Uh, and then on top of that, they have the anemia from the GAVE. So uh, their quality of life can be very impaired, can't it? Yeah, sorry, the connection, I, I cannot hear your voice very well, but I understood that you said that his chronic condition is together most of the time with other conditions. This patient, for, for example, is a cardiopathic patient, so he was on, on antiplatelets, and we have to stop before the treatment. So I agree with you that it's very, it can be very challenging because the GAVE is responsible for up to 4% of all the bleeding from the GI tract, apart from the varices, of course. Uh, but before talking about RFA, let me say that I'm very glad and very happy to use for the first time here this scope from the Sonoscape. It's a Chinese company that came with this HD uh, scopes. Are we okay? Yeah. Um, the, the particularly um, is that they have four LED. So you have this, you can see here on the screen, I think, and I hope you can see these brighter, very high quality images, and this impressive, the quality of the image. And then also the Sonoscape comes with this uh, chrome endoscopy that is called the VIST, that is the Variable Intelligence Staining Technology. And you have the VIST one and two. So I will show you. Unfortunately, or fortunately for the patient, it depends. I don't have any lesion, but because of the gay, that is a vascular defect, I can show you how the VIST one announced the vascular pattern and how the VIST2 announced also the glandular pattern. Can you see it? Can That's you see how nice beautiful and nice how clear is the image? It's one of the best quality ever seen. I don't know if you agree with me. You are very experienced. So tell me. I agree with you. Uh, especially for the Asians, it can be very helpful in helping you, uh, you know, target your areas, but also look after treatment to see if you've left any uh, vascular areas. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so the things uh, to proceed with RFA is that, as you can see from my screen, I put the focal catheter. I choose the Barrick Metronic focal catheter, this one, that is the 90 RFA, 20 in 13 millimeter. Uh, I was in doubt to use this one or the very, the extra long focal catheter, but I thought that maybe this one should be easier to use than the other one. So I choose this one, and uh, as you can see from my screen, I put the focal catheter at 6 o'clock, according to my screen. Because in the GAVE, it's quite easier to use uh, in this position instead of the 12 o'clock position that is the same position that usually we use for bar ablation, but not for GAVE, because we are in the antrum and in the posterior wall, it's quite easier to 
push and to stay stable with the catheter at this position. So basically the procedure is not very complex because once you are in place, it's enough to push and to press till that your target area, let's say that is this one, is the gold area that you can see on the screen that is the ablating area. Then I deflate to see that my catheter is attached completely to the mucosa. And then I simply press the blue button in this way. I wait and my assistant will tell me the, will tell me the percentage, 100. 100 percentage, it means that my catheter, it was completely attached and the ablation gone well. I won't move from this position because usually you can arrive till four times ablation in the same target area. So I will apply a second time and uh, I will ask for the percentage, 100 again. So I'm happy, uh, uh, tell me. Uh, two very important points that you've shown us there. One is the positioning of the catheter on the opposite side of where you would treat for Barrett's, which is something that, you know, people who do this yeah. must take home. But also, let me ask you a question about your dosimetry here. You talked about four ablations, but are you using 12 joules or 15 joules? I'm using 12 because it's the first time that I treat this patient with RFA. One more time, I will use the 15, but just because it's the first time, I want to see how this tissue will respond to my treatment. So I will start with the lowest one, with the 12. And uh, I say that you can arrive till four time ablation in the same target area. This I did only two, but I'm not so happy. I think that now the second ablation will go for at least three times. So, so Rebecca, I try uh, proximally. Tell me. We, uh, whilst you're doing this uh, very nice demonstration, we, uh, we published uh, on this topic last year. Uh, looking yep. at exactly the cohort of patients who are uh, refractory to, uh, to first-line therapy with argon, who then remain transfusion dependent. Uh, and we looked at uh, RF as rescue therapy. And what we showed was that in the three months before and the three and the six months afterwards, we reduced the, uh, we reduced the transfusion requirements, but also we showed that they would normally need two sessions uh, like you've alluded to just then. Yeah, exactly. I say that also for this uh, patient, we can call this uh, a rescue therapy because it's not responding anymore to the APC. And these are cardiological patients, so we can't wait till the bleeding comes uh, to treat it in emergency. We should treat it in election. What do you think? I think, well, to a cost effectiveness uh, argument yeah. as well. We've recently looked at this because uh, RF is a, a very effective for this type of mucosal ablation uh, for repeated treatment can be quite, uh, quite expensive. The, from our experience, and we have a big cohort of these patients, we find that the slightly more flexible catheter, which is the channel yeah. or the through the scope, uh, although the surface area is less, uh, it can be slightly better for targeting these areas uh, in the antrum and the prepyloric canal. Okay. So which type of catheter do you usually use for this type? Yeah, so Roberta, we normally use the flexible, the through the scope RFA catheter, the channel, okay. um, which uh, sometimes can just be a little bit easier, you know, especially when you have some scar tissue from the previous ablation. Uh, uh -huh. or in the antrum but you're doing a fantastic job here uh, and you can see how Roberta is just very patiently overlapping her ablation zones and, yeah, I was and it's very I'm continuing ablating otherwise I will have no time to do this and my assistant is still saying that I'm 100 percentage of uh, adherence to the tissue I want and to Roberta if you can just yep. show the the audience, what you're doing here, you can see what Roberta is doing is she's working in a stepwise pattern. So she started in the six o'clock position and she's coming back because uh, this is not an oncological procedure. So you don't need to have, you know, a hundred percent coverage. Uh, so yeah. uh, you can see a very nice uh, demonstration there of the, the RF being delivered.
Yeah, what I usually do, I start from the pylorus, I mean from the distal side, coming back to the proximal. So also the vision of what you are doing and what you've done, it's uh, easily done. So Let with me the ask you a question. Yep. Tell me. Uh, so let me ask you a question. So the, you know, the, the, the sometimes when you have, uh, you know, nodular gala can be very challenging uh, with a flat catheter. Do you ever use uh, any other therapy like uh, ligation with the, uh, the, the varicea ligation device perhaps? Yeah, yeah. I use the band ligation. Uh, the fact is that also the band ligation is usually used as a rescue therapy. But when you have the fibrosis from previous APC treatment, it's sometimes very difficult to suck in the band your tissue. So it's, a, it's an easy procedure from the technical point of view because it's nothing different from the varices ligation, but at the same time can be difficult in that area that can have some fibrosis from previous treatment. But yeah, if nice you are to... able to, it's excellent. So when will you bring this patient back, Roberta? After this treatment, uh, you, will you will you prophylactically treat them again in a period of time, or you'll wait to see what their hemoglobin does? Yeah, I think so because you know that every uh, focal catheter has a maximum of uh, ablation that you can do. This one is eighty. How many ablation have we done? Twenty-eight. So I don't want to do uh, so many ablation in one session. Next week he will do uh, a hemochrome to, un to understand uh, the level of the hemoglobin, and then we'll see, but no more than two, no, not less than two weeks. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, so, that's what we do in our in I our think patient. they are ready in the other room. Okay, very nice. This slide shows the patient's further clinical course. In the next slide, the instrument and device used in this case are shown. And finally, this is Roberta Maselli's recommended reading.